Thank you very much. So what is Second Life? How many, how, how many of you have, have seen or heard something about Second Life on TV? How many of you have actually been inside of Second Life? That's about right. Usually that's the same numbers I get with my classes. Uh, how many of you are slightly afraid or disturbed of what Second Life might be and therefore haven't gone, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Second Life, it, it's not a game. It's a virtual world. It's a virtual world in which uh, you can build and create most anything based on a novel written by Neil Stevenson uh, back in 1992. This interesting novel laid out a, a, a near future in which uh, he described several different technologies, such as a globe that you would sit on your desk and uh, try to zoom in and out of an earth to see what was going on anywhere on that earth. He called it Earth. We call it Google Earth. Uh, likewise, he described a, uh, an online universe in which uh, users would go in and have little characters that uh, would, they would use to pretend to be uh, something else. They, they would create buildings. He called it the metaverse. We call it Second Life. To give you a little bit of an introduction to uh, that concept, let me remind you, this is me. <laughs> This is my avatar. An avatar is your representation within Second Life. Uh, but you don't have to be human. This is a furry. This is a vampire. This is a newbie. In the real world, we have discriminations and, and uh, based on sex or race or that sort of thing. In, uh, in, in Second Life, you, you become discriminated based on if you're a noob or if you are... Um, a vampire, or, or if you have to be a furry or something like that. Uh, it's a very strange, strange world. Um, and for several years, the first several years, most of it was gambling, which uh, I, I didn't partake in because that's illegal. Uh, uh, and the parts that weren't gambling were sex. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is actually a bachelor party that preceded a wedding. Some people go in there and create uh, online relationships. That's not me. Uh, actually, the other one is. I, I got asked to be a, a groomsman at a wedding, so I went for that. It is a strange world. And when, after having sort of explored it for uh, the first six months, which is years ago now, I decided I wanted to try and do something productive within it. And so I built... Uh, a planetarium. I didn't have a planetarium at Elon University and decided this was my chance to, to have a planetarium. After I'd constructed it, though, uh, something went up in the backyard, uh, a female vampire porn shop. Um, <laughs> and I decided I needed to transplant my planetarium if I was going to send students there. And so I looked for other professors. I searched through the web to try and find any other professors that were doing any sort of education at a university campus, anything. And all I found at that time uh, was a university in which all the professors were 100 years old and all the students were wayward girls. <laughs> and so I decided if there wasn't going to be a campus, that I would create one and approached Linden Labs, the company uh, that had created sec the Second Life product, to set aside a parcel of their world for education. Uh, but actually, that we, we quickly outgrew that, and I ended up tying uh, my planetarium in with a group of people that built this. Some people build model rockets, like little ones about yay big for a living, and some people build vir full-scale virtual rockets on their computers, and that's what we have here. These are, this is not NASA. These are people in their own homes that have an interest in spaceflight, that look up the specs of rockets and build them in excruciating detail. This is the International Space Flight Museum built entirely by volunteers. My planetarium went up on the corner of that virtual island. And this is actually a student show, written, or a show written by my students, where the public showed up. What, what, what I find fascinating here is that, that the public does show up for these sorts of things, that they're, that they're actually willing to stand in line um, virtually to have that communal learning experience with other learners. Wouldn't it would be far easier to go to a blog or to go to a nice website or pick up a magazine or, or watch Nova. But they want to not be learning science alone. They want to do that with other people. And so they log on to Second Life to watch a, a fairly mediocre show written by, by, by undergraduate students that aren't even science majors, but to, to do that in an engaged community of learners. Um, I've also been um, trying to test the concept of building virtual uh, telescopes such that uh, you could... Uh, have students that might break your real telescope 
practice on the virtual one uh, before going in there. This is gonna be, took me about a day to build. Um, if you are brave enough to log into Second Life, you might be curious where you can find all the stuff that I've been showing you. And the answer uh, that uh, Al alluded to was the silence. Um, capital S, capital L, same as like Second Life. Uh, just to give you some background, on, well, what do I can use the word island? What do I mean by island? Well, this is an island. Uh, each space within Second Life is actually a, a computer, much like the one right here, the one right there, that run, acts as a server for people to log into. You do that all the time when you're surfing the web. But this server runs a virtual island. And about, well, a little bit over a year ago, uh, I got together with a handful of other people that also did not want to have uh, vampire porn shops in their backyard uh, to create a, a pool of science islands that would work together and share ideas. The founding members of that were the International Space Flight Museum, which I just mentioned, NASA, the Exploratorium, which is a science museum in San Francisco, I highly recommend it, University of Denver, the National Physical Laboratory in the United Kingdom, and my own Elon University. I don't really like science policy that much. Uh, but I didn't want to have to deal with problems of, and having neighbors that I didn't like. And so I got uh, forced into writing up the science policy for how NASA and NOAA and Science Friday now for NPR and pretty much any top-notch science facility comes in and where their island goes, uh, we so that we could work together. Here are the bylaws for our organization. We have, you can find us on Wikipedia, uh, our own, our own uh, website, a, a blog, and that sort of thing. Uh, but we had to craft rules uh, that would accommodate the needs of Linden Lab, that would also accommodate the needs of a NASA administration that didn't understand why they were spending money on this. Uh, and and, and, and they, they still don't quite understand that uh, when you go to NASA's island, a big chunk of NASA's islands is dedicated to giving presentations that are PowerPoint presentations in a virtual world, which th that doesn't really work in a real classroom. And so I, I hesitate to take that into a virtual classroom. There are a few things that they, that they have done, though, that are simply amazing. For instance, creating the, uh, on one little tiny corner of, of one of NASA's islands, they've got a recreation of uh, the Mars landscape where you can uh, stand there, and then you can have like a Mars surveyor, or, or sorry, some of the Mars landers bounce down and go past you. 